Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for the haves and the have nots. This is season five, episode seven. This is a new lipstick that I do not know if I like on camera because I think it's because of my skin tone. It looks different on camera than it does like in pictures. Cause I'm like the picture I just posted on Instagram, Jay Lee's Corner on Instagram, doesn't look how it looks in here so if y'all see this looks like oh it looks horrible look at the picture on my instagram it does not look the same but we're gonna rock it through you know what i'm saying it's a new mac lipstick it is i think it's called bubble yum color very very much pink but yeah i think it's because my skin tone is you know a little normal i don't know whatever but it is what it is it's just a video it doesn't really matter Anywho, I hope everyone had a great day today. It is currently 116. 116 is my birthday. Well, my birthday is January 16th. But anyway, 1 o'clock in the morning. So technically it's Wednesday. It's technically hump day. And I can't wait to get over the goddamn hump. Um, the episode starts off where the last one left off. You know, Quita and Candace up in the dang old prison jail cell fist, fist fighting like some goddamn heathens and i'm like people need to learn how to control themselves and not only that but in real life they would never have two people who are known to not like each other or they would never have a person who was accused of killing someone in the same cell with their sister it just ain't gonna happen but this is tyler perry as they know we know in tyler perry world nothing makes goddamn no sense so the police come in and put them apart, of course, and they're yelling, you bitch this and you bitch that, and I'm going to get you. Oh, like I got your brother, like I got Quincy. First of all, Candace, you done for saying that. But whatever, we don't really care. You know, the DA then comes in, DA Lynn, and like, you know, Candace, Candace uh, Young, I want to talk to you. I ain't got nothing I want to say. He like, well, you know what? Just listen. Come on, let's go. So they go into the same interrogation room that Justin was molesting Jeffrey in this past couple episodes ago. And, you know, he like, I want to talk to you about your uh, charges. And then she's like, I didn't rob nobody. I don't know what you're talking about. So I don't, you know, I didn't do anything. He's like, oh, no, not that. You know, about the murder for Quincy Maxwell. She's like, I didn't murder him. I wasn't charged. You know, whatever. He then say, yeah, we know that. And she said, yeah, because, you know, you couldn't do anything because the warrant wasn't valid. He then go on like a little fishing mission. You know, he pull up how he got this bracelet. We know it's Benny's bracelet as evidence. And he like, you know, we're going to find, we're going to find whoever's fingerprints on it. You know, we're going to do this and do that. And she's like, you can't even use that as evidence because you don't have a body because the warrant wasn't valid. He then say, well, we have a witness. She's like, is there isn't any witnesses. He's talking about Jeffrey going to be a witness. Now, we know Jeffrey ass is in jail. He's scared as the, as the day is long. And he Lynn is trying to play Candace against Jeffrey. That's basically what he's doing. You know, but Candace is saying, like, you know, I don't care because, one, I didn't do nothing. And, two, Jeffrey not going to speak up. So, it is what it is. You know, Jeffrey innocent. I'm innocent. He ain't going to testify. He ain't going to be no witness. Gone with, your game, gone with your games. And so, he's like, you know, once Jeffrey testifies, testifies against you, you know what I'm saying, you going down. And she keeps saying, he ain't going to say a word. He's like, all right. Well, you know what? You're free to go. If the charges against you were dropped anyway, the person said it was a mistake. It's something bullshit that we know that really Charles, the president, is the one who getting her out. So, let's not act like we don't know that. And um, she's like, well, fine, I'm leaving. He's like, well, no, we still have to process you out. She's like, why would you process me out? If the charges were never filed, he like, well, because you were brought in, we have to make sure it's done correctly. He like, you must have people in high places. She do, the goddamn president. So when he getting up to leave out, they bring Jeffrey in there and sit Jeffrey down. Really? So, of course, Jeffrey sits down in there and Jeffrey's being stupid. Jeffrey, I don't know how long he's been in jail. It seems like he may have been in there a day or two because... Maybe a day or two, because Veronica was in an accident. I think they only kept her in the hospital for a day. And she got into the accident the same day that Jeffrey got arrested. So he only been in jail for like a day. And it's just a holding cell. It's like you're not even back there with rapists and stuff. You're back there, up there with like people who got maybe like a DUI, maybe a traffic ticket. You're not even in real prison, Jeffrey. Calm your ass down. 
But when he come in and he sit, you know, in front of Candace, he looking at her like, he looking at her, she looking at him, he looking at her. They looking back and forth at each other. And she was like, you know everything is in here, it's being recorded, right? He's like, yeah, I know. And she's like, good, I need you to understand. But Jeffrey's so smart, but he acting real stupid. Because he then keeps saying, you know, I can't believe my mom did this. She's like, well, I can't, mama's crazy. And he's like, yeah, but, you know, I just can't believe she had me arrested. So she's, Candace said, well, it doesn't matter because you didn't do it. And he was like, well, wait, why didn't she tell on you? Why didn't she rat you out? Why didn't she have you arrested? And she said, because I didn't do anything. And you didn't do anything. So just stop talking. Jeffrey keep talking because Jeffrey is batshit crazy. I think Jeffrey is tra probably traumatized from being molested by Justin. So right now he's thinking everybody against him. And that's just what he's thinking. And then he said to Candace, you know, I'm tired of you, you and my mom. You know, get me mixed up with all this foolishness. I mean, technically, yes, Candace got him mixed up in some foolishness. But on the flip side, the whole reason Quincy was out was because of Veronica. So it's really all Veronica fault because she got Quincy out. She put Quincy on a path to try to kill Candace and to beat up Jeffrey. So this is all Veronica's fault, truth be told. And, you know, she's like, you know, Jeffrey, you're being paranoid. You know me. You're being paranoid. Shut the fuck up up and he like you know whatever so they of course come and tell her that she get out and she said like you know they want this what they want they put us in because they know it's been recorded and they want us to try to do something and try to say something and she's like but we didn't do anything you didn't do anything and i didn't do anything so you need to just be quiet i mean that alone is can be conspiracy to something because y'all keep saying how he needed to just be quiet i look if jeffy was talking i just wanted to say nothing back Bruh, I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't saying shit. But, you know, she leave and then Justin says, I'll talk to you later. Which means he like, look, I'm getting the fuck up out of here. Come hell or hot water. And, you know, she gets laid out or whatever. You know, on the outside of the thing, when she's putting her shoes on and getting her purse, <clears throat> we see she runs into David. Now, David sometimes is a little bit stupid too. Solely because David know Jeffrey did it. He's aware that Jeffrey actually did kill Quincy. Um, even when he was with the help or whatever with Candace, he know Jeffrey did it. But he like, you know, you never know Jeffrey didn't do this. You know, you should go and, t and, and turn yourself in so he can get out. The fuck you mean? I'm not doing that. No, sir. No, ma'am. No, thank you. They don't have no evidence against me. And your son really did do it, homie. So you're a judge. Your wife's a lawyer. If you can't get him out, what the fuck I'm going to do? They gonna know I didn't do it by myself because I'm a female and I had to have help burying this body. And, you know, because he said, well, you know, it's your fault. He in this mess. And she said, no, actually, it's his, his mother's fault. So, you know, it's all on her. Um, and he like, you know, how are you okay with him just being in jail? She's like, how else would you expect me to be? Like, what do you expect me to do? And as fucked up as it is, I agree. He did do it. He in jail. I'm not turning myself in because he in jail. I'm the fuck the fuck you mean? No. So, you know, um, she then say, hey, you know Oscar? And he's like, who? Oscar who? She's like, Oscar, the guy you hired to seduce me and take all my money. And he was like, that was Jim's money. And then she said, oh, well, you know what? Payback's a bitch. Meaning, you took me to the cleaners for my money. And now your son is in jail. You really expect me to help you get him out and turn myself in? Nope, mm -mm. I'm not gonna do it. Bye bye. And she basically leaves, and it is what it is. Um, we have a small scene with Hannah and Derek. They're still enjoying their cup of coffee at Catherine's house, and they laughing and giggling and all this little cuteness and stuff. And Hannah has loosened up to not be so. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't like nobody. I want to just be sad and be praying to Jesus. And Jesus ain't sending me no man. And he kind of probably has sent you some man, and you probably just been ignoring it. I mean, Hannah sometimes be so consumed with what she's not supposed to be doing, she don't realize that she could be doing other things that God could be sending her way. So for the first time in a long time, Hannah has her eyes open. She's laughing. She has a little twinkle in her eye. And Derek has, you know what I'm saying, made her feel better. So he then said, you know what, how about I, you know, can I take you to dinner? Now first, you know, Hannah, nah, we were supposed to only have coffee and he said well, yeah but you said this tea was gonna be the, was the cover up for the coffee he's like so now you know what i'm saying can i take you on a date so she 
finally say yes. But then she also says to him, you know, I don't have no fancy clothes, so, you know, don't pick no fancy location. You know, I want to go somewhere regular. He like, you know, I can go wherever you want us to go, like where you want to go. She's like, no, no, no. You know, you pick it. And I do think it's right for men to pick the place. I hate when guys ask me out and then say where I want to go. Where you want to take me? Plan a goddamn date. You know what I'm saying? Especially first dates. I hate that. Because then it's, it's almost like he don't want to, like, use his own brain to come up with something creative or something nice. If I tell you what I want to do, you, I, I'm bored at that point because I feel like you didn't want to put no effort into it. I mean, hell. And, guys, I'll be like, where you want to go? And I'll be like, nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> get a plan something to let me know. You know what I'm saying? I will meet you there. Oh my god, I hate that. Well, I want to take you wherever you want to go. I want to go to the bank and take make and make a withdrawal. Can you give me some money? I'm just playing. I'm just joking. Y'all don't don't take me serious. Anywho, so he says okay. You know what I'm saying? He gonna plan it. He'll they gonna go out like tomorrow or whatever. So you know they leaving. Of course, Catherine is listening. So Catherine come in like, hey, how did it go? What's going on? Oh, you have a day. She's like, I know your ass was listening. So yeah, it is what it is. And then Catherine then says, you know, what is this about you not having any fancy clothes? Like, why don't you have any fancy clothes? Bitch, because she's poor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, Hannah reminds her, remember, you know, the fire. And that's true. Hannah's whole house burned down. Her house burned down. She lost her job. She lost her car. I'm wondering where the clothes she got on right now, where them damn things came from. But I digress. Catherine then comes up with a genius idea, which I don't know why people do this. Can I make you over? No. No, thank you. I don't need that. And technically, Hannah already has a makeover because the Hannah we see now is not the same Hannah from season one. She's a little bit more young looking, a little bit more uh, fashionable. The old Hannah was walking around and like like a Mormon, you know? And Catherine's like, no, you know, not that you look bad, but like, let's get you, you know, make you, when he comes pick you up, you'll look, you know, just fantastic. I can call my girls and they can come and do A, B, and C, and D. And Catherine, I mean, and you know, Hannah, like, nope, I'm okay. You know, if he gonna like me and date me, he need to date me as I am. And I think that's true. I think it's true. And I, uh, Catherine, you done gave that lady a house, a job, you done hooked up with a man. She not your pet puppet. Okay, sometimes you go to a little bit too far. And I get that Catherine has the best intentions. And I know she don't mean no harm. But, I mean, sometimes you got to just pump your brakes, bitch. Pump your brakes. So, the next thing that we see, Quito, get up, Quito, Quita, oh, ghetto ass is out of jail. And we see that Oscar paid her bail. Because Oscar's hoping that Quita know the pass, the, the pin number to um, Wyatt's. Uh, debit card or his, his his credit card or whatever to that account. She like so. First of all, when he he said he got her out of jail. So what? You want to have some coochie right now? You want to? We can go get in this car. We can do some things. You want me to turn some tricks? I'm looking like don't nobody want you like that, girl. Girl, bye. You know he like look. No, I just need some information from you. you know, I know you still white credit card. I just still nothing. Get the fuck you did, girl. You know you did. And he kept like, you know, if you don't, if you don't help me, those cops right there, they're going to arrest you again because I paid your bill. But if I say so, they're going to put you back in jail. And of course, she's like, oh, okay, fine, whatever. So she said that she had the pen number, but she know he changed it because when she kept putting it in, it kept coming back wrong. He then like, well, you know how much money he had, well, you know the account that it's in. My thing is, I don't, Quita ain't that smart at all. And all they were trying to do was take money out the bank. And I don't know why he going to Quita as if Quita is his gang, dang going to mastermind. And, like, she, you know, know everything he got going on. And, like, she has access to his actual banking accounts. She had a goddamn debit card. <laughs> Girl, bye. So, he gave her, like, 500 bucks. Say, look, you know, this is the money. You know, this is my card. If you think about anything else, you know, give me a call. But I might need you again for some other things. I'm like, for what? She don't know shit. She couldn't get no more money at the ATM machine. Leave that girl alone. So she walk away or whatever. We then see, you know, one of the cops, I think who he had, let Quita go for whatever reason. It's like, all right, where my money at? He like, I need you to do something else. He then had this whole thing where Wyatt ends up calling him back about the ATM stuff or something. And, you know, he got the whole fake voice. Like, yeah, we, but for us to do that, we need the police report. So, because Wyatt, I think Wyatt think he's called, no, Wyatt called a number because the, they took money out of his account. So, the number he called was trying, was some kind of way Oscar had all the calls that go to him. So, Oscar then is front, like he's the bank or whatever, and all right, you know, for us to reimburse you this money, we need you to give us a police report. He's like, cool. Hang up the phone. 
Why then calls another number, which I guess is supposed to be the police. Again, the call goes to Oscar. Oscar changed his voice again. He like, all right, you know, yeah, I'm a cop or whatever. I'm at the station, you know. I can get your report if you just give me this information over the phone. Why is a little bit smart and say, no, nah, I'm going to come down there and see y'all in person. What precinct you at or whatever. So he said, all right, I'm at this precinct. Come down there. He ended up having Wyatt go down there. And Wyatt ends up going into the interrogation room to talk to someone to get a police report, which I don't think is how they do things in real life or whatever. And the same cop that Oscar was paying to get Quita out came in talking to Wyatt and then asked Wyatt for his cell phone to make the report go easy. I don't know why Wyatt wouldn't say, what do you need my cell phone for? But Wyatt is dumb. He's on drugs. It is what it is. So the guy I caught the cop, take the cell phone, he go back out and give it to Oscar. Oscar gave him like a whole bunch of money, like a whole little stack of money, probably a couple thousand. And then, you know, Oscar leaves with the cell phone and the cop walks away. I'm like, why are you going to realize that this cop took his phone? But it is what it is. Um, was that it? Yeah, that was it for a little white stuff. Um, we see David and Veronica having a conversation. David basically calls Veronica and saying that she needs to get Wyatt out of jail. Veronica, like, he want to be a girl. He can be a girl. I ain't got time for her. She tried to turn me into the police, and she wanted to testify against me. <laughs> David, David like, who the fuck is she? He was like, Jeffrey, your son. I'm like, Veronica so damn stupid. You know, David is, and Veronica there. It's like it's a back and forth thing with Veronica. Veronica don't like the Jeffrey Gate. We know she don't like the Jeffrey Gate, and she don't want to get him out of jail. David keeps saying, you know, you going to get him out of jail. David, she ain't listening, bro. She ain't listening. And my thing is, you should be able to do, the fact that you were a judge, you should have more pull and be able to do something besides call Veronica and tell her to do something. Uh, you strong, David. You be talking about you can move stuff with the Rock of Gibraltar and all this stuff. You can part mountains and spread seeds and all this stuff. Well, do something, bro, besides calling Veronica oh, crazy ass. So... Veronica do ask him, where's that girl at? Don't you bring her up. You leave her alone. And he, she's like, you know, why do you care about her so much or whatnot? He like, you know, oh, does it make you angry? And she says, all that matters is when I catch her, I'm going to send her back to you in pieces. I said, well, damn, bitch. Okay, Veronica. She do ask David also if he had anything to do with her being ran over. And he was like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm calling you about our son. But anyway, you know. That's the whole end of their conversation. But Veronica's definitely crazy. She's definitely batshit crazy for a lot of different reasons and for no reasons at all. And I mean, I still wish that she was at least paralyzed. Like, I, I feel like her getting into that car accident, they didn't hurt her enough. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Benny got hit by a car. He was in a coma for a whole damn season. And he was an innocent bystander. I mean, rocking it and all kind of foolish shit. She gets flipped over in the car and, and is left in the car and has smoke inhalation. She don't come out without one scratch? Come on, now y'all can at least kill the goddamn baby and Melissa's fake ass belly? Nothing? Yeah, man, man. So, we see Mitch and Benny basically going to Mitch's uncle to try to get this loan. I don't know. Benny, to be so cute, Benny just to be stupid sometimes and he just too cute to be that stupid and I just don't know what's gonna happen with him you know so they go there and initially the uncle like who is this dude you know what is he doing here and he like this my friend you know this is Benny and he's here for a loan he like yeah whatever nope I ain't giving him a loan you know I ain't doing that he don't even look like he about that life and then he's like this cause he's black this cause he black ain't it well why would you bring your black friend to your racist uncle why would you do that Hmm. You don't know? But I'm like, if you know he don't like black people, why bring him there? But it is what it is. You know, he then says, <clears throat> you don't know who this is? This is Candace Young's brother. You know what she did for us? She brought us war. And as he talking, Benny looking like, what the fuck? She did what? What did she do? Because, you know, of course, Benny don't know. I don't, I don't even think Benny know war did. Yeah, I don't think you know that. And he like, what? What are you talking about? He like, I'll tell you about that later. So he like, oh, you're Candace's brother? That's your sister? He's like, yeah. 
He like, all right, you know, we owe her one, so you know what I'm saying, you can get the loan. He like, but it's gonna be at a 25, was it either 20 percent, 20, either 20 percent, 25 percent, 20 percent interest rate. So he like, you know, I need 45 thousand at 20 percent interest rate. He like, well, that's kind of high. He like, no, that's what the good. That's he said, that's a discount because of what your sister did. I'm like, well, goddamn. So being like, you know, cool. He then said, all right, so that means every six months you bring me 18 grand. He like, if you can't do it, you know, you can't go back on it when things get tough. You know what I'm saying? Mitch can't save you. And I'm like, Benny, don't do it. Don't do it, Benny. Don't do it. Benny don't listen. He take the money. He happy. He like, you know, he going to do what he do. So when him and Mitch finna leave, and he still ain't asking Mitch what the fuck Candace did. But him and Mitch are leaving, and Veronica call. He like, oh, my God, why is she calling me? But Mitch like, no, nah, man, you need to answer the phone. He answered, and Veronica then say, um... Jeffrey told David, my package, Jeffrey told David that you helped him and Candace bury Quincy. So you might be getting arrested. So we need to talk and come to the house right now. He's like, well, God damn it. He's like, all right, well, I'm on my way. I'm like, boy, don't do it. We see a little scene of Candace showing up to david's house now the first question i had was how does she know where david lived when david wasn't even really living there like how did she get there and i'm just assuming well maybe she asked erica for the address and erica gave her the address but when she got there erica said you're not supposed to be here shut up bitch <sighs> candace in this whole i'm a pimp i hate everybody and i rule with an iron fist persona i don't like it it's it's, it's honestly boring Really, it's boring. It's predictable. Every time she's on the screen with Erica, we know she's gonna be bitchy. I mean, I just want to be shocked. I haven't been shocked in a minute. Um, on what Tyler, so much Tyler Perry stuff. So you know, she's like, "Look, I don't want you to get the money real fast anymore." Erica's like, "Right, remember? Cause I, I thought that too. It was just too much too soon." She's like, "Did I tell you to think, girl? Whatever." She then says, I want you to get everything. I want you to get all his account numbers, his bank account numbers, his, his mother's maiden name. It's, I want you to get everything, and I'm going to take in for everything he got, and I want you to do it, and you don't have long to do it, so get to it. And she was like, you know, but how am I supposed to get that? You know, he has nothing here. She's like, I don't give a fuck. Just basically figure it out, you know what I'm saying, and do it quick, fast, in a hurry before I get pissed off. Erica all like, okay, that's fine. Erica need to go ahead and kill Candace. Erica need to either go ahead and kill Candace or she just be honest with David. Because my thing is, I don't have time to be trying to watch my goddamn back between Candace's crazy ass and then trying to make sure that David don't realize that I know Candace. But I guess the only people that could connect Candace and Erica together was War and War as is dead. So, well, and Mitch. I'm pretty sure Mitch knows Erica. And probably Benny. Anywho, it is what it is. So, yeah. She's like, you know, do that. Like I told you, don't take all day. But again, Candace, just, I'm just over it. There's a small scene with Landon. We know Landon like the president. We know Landon is gay. He wanted to turn uh, President Charles on out. But I don't think Charlie going to go for it, honey. I really, really don't. I think if Charles finds out that Landon likes him and that he's gay. But no, I think he finds out that he likes him and he wants to turn him gay. Charles might cut Landon's head off. I'm not sure, but that could possibly be what happened. So, Charles is like on the bed sitting and he's like having a drink of scotch or whatever. And Landon goes to try to take this man's shoes off. Charles is like, Landon, what the fuck is you doing? And he's like, I'm taking your shoes off. He's like, I can take my own shoes off. He's like, well, all right, sir, but you know you need to get used to that. Because once you become president, you know, you're going to always have people doing things for you. I don't think anyone was out here taking the president's shoes off. I really do think the president was able to put his own shoes off and on. And I just don't think that's something that you have to worry about. I mean, they might make his breakfast. They might make his bed. They might even help him put on a suit jacket. But I don't think it ain't no staff in here that say, you know, president, let me help you put the shoes on. I mean, unless the president's arms are broken and they can't, you know, touch nothing. But Landon, get your about that flow boy get up what are you doing and i'm like is charles gonna kick him in his face but you know he get up and say you know it is what it is and then you know Land charles does say to landon the only thing i need you because you know, landon said you know i'm here to do whatever you need me to do whatever you want to do i'm here to help you he said you know what all i need you to focus on is making sure that my children have the most normalized stable um life i don't want them you know not living their own lives and not being able to be kids i wanted them to have as much normalcy as possible he said because you know when i get out of this they'll be teenagers and i want them to be able to say they had a good time and you know <laughs> landon like you know what i'll make sure to do that you know i'm here at your beck and call whatever you need 
Landon, Landon, Linda, 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 stop it, okay? Just stop it. So he leaves and it is what it is. The last thing that we see of the episode, Melissa, babe, Melissa is the most changed character simply because she no longer gives any fucks, baby. She don't give not one fuck, two fuck, three fucks. She don't give any fucks. Not, she gives zero, negative zero, minus 13, plus five, carry to six, negative 37, fucks, okay? She don't care about nothing. The damn doorbell ring and she sit on the couch and rock like, I'll get it. <laughs> Melissa said, I know you think I'll get a goddamn door. I'm like, bitch, what? And rock like, you know what? I'm getting tired of your shit. She's like, I don't care. Girl, whatever. I'm carrying this baby. I'm like, <laughs> Melissa, Melissa is, I love Melissa's character. I really do. I love how she's evolved from this little petite Oh, little baby poodle and now she's like a goddamn rock wilder. and you know it is what it is so but veronica standing over her knowing that she walk away that melissa might like punch in the back of the head veronica say come in it's open of course it's benny melissa's like hey benny i'm like i wonder if veronica realized that she keeps saying hey benny because they fucked well i don't we know she don't know that yet but still so <laughs> veronica like you know we need to talk in private. Honey, Melissa said, but go in the motherfucking kitchen. I said, Melissa, girl, you funny now. So, you know, they go upstairs and Melissa say, watch out for her now. She an old one. She'll get you. She sure in the fuck will and she probably sure in the fuck have already. So, you know, they go upstairs and she telling me like, yes, you know, you could get arrested. You know, Jeffrey said A, B, and C, but I can help you. I can bury the case. I can bury the evidence. So don't worry about it. And I was say, but Veronica, if I don't need to worry about it, then why the fuck you had me come over here? But Benny ain't say that. Veronica, you know, I guess now she fell all bad after her accident, which we know ain't real. Because when I got into my accident, you hurt for days, baby, for days. And she touching on him and stuff, kissing on him and stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? I want to take all your body. And he like, Mrs. Harrington, Mrs. Harrington, you know, stop, Mrs. Harrington. It sounds a little bit like rape a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the whole just weirdness of him calling her Mrs. Harrington and not calling her Veronica. That's just a little weird. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit weird. It's like Mrs. Robinson all over again, but it is what it is. So, you know, she touching and rubbing on him or whatever. And, of course, he get hard. She's like, see, your little 25-year-old self can't resist. And I'm like, well, because you rub on that man. And he wants some old puss. So it is what it is. And he start taking his clothes off. And she sit down and she watch him take his clothes off. And he said, you should be giving me some money for this. And she said, baby, you're going to be paying me. Y'all up at pimping and hoeing. So they in the bed doing things to strain for some change. But ain't nobody paying for it. Then downstairs again, the doorbell ring. Melissa say, this bitch always got my fucking visitors. Come in. I'm like, why is she crazy? So it's David. David come in. Where's Veronica? She's like, hello. Where's Veronica? I said hello. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm listen. Hi, how are you? Where's Veronica? She's like, oh, she upstairs in her room. And no, she said she upstairs. She's like, we're upstairs where? Upstairs in her room. Where's the room? She's like, you know what? Let me show you. She showed up, get up, and she tried upstairs. And she's like, oh, her door is locked. She pulled out a damn credit card, out of her pocket, to pick the lock of Veronica's bedroom. <sighs> Melissa ain't damn on look. <laughs> when she pulled out that credit card to pick that goddamn lock, I said, that girl ain't no thief. She ain't no goddamn locksmith. But you know, whatever. Honey, they open the door and Benny is giving it to Veronica. Okay, they is in the midst of the passion. And then <laughs> Melissa was like, oh. <laughs> they was like, oh my God, Veronica. And Benny look up like, ah, oh, and then she look like, ah, oh, because of course, you know, she want David to be jealous. And I think David, David just like, I don't want to see you fucking nobody because I just don't like you no more. And that's how the episode goes off. So, you know, things happen in this episode, but at the same time, things didn't happen. I just feel like the story not progressing enough. It's the same thing with Tyler Perry TV shows. If, you know, for every episode it take two steps. It's it's eighteen stories, so that's like each story take a quarter of an inch of a step to get two feet. It's just you know I just want I want to know the whole, why you dragging the thing out with Landon. Why you just won't let um, Jeffrey out of jail. Why won't you show us where Justin's wife is? Um, 
Oh, Jim. Jim met with that the DA lady, and she gave him a whole bunch of evidence. And the only thing they have now was like Wyatt's testimony, and he was saying like, "Oh, how is the DA gonna feel when he realized all the evidence gone? He gonna realize he need to fire her ass because she did it. Case is gonna happen." And you know, are we done now? Are we are we even? He's like, "Yeah, but I might want to do you just some. You know, I don't, I don't like Jim, so it don't matter." But he gave her, she gave him the evidence. They didn't have sex, and her ass left, and that's really was what all that happened on this particular episode. So. I hope you guys enjoy my particular review. I am Jay Lee. I don't, still don't think I like this lipstick. But then again, do I like this lipstick? I don't know. Anywho, I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Until next time, people. Peace.